Oh, okay. <laughs> You're a mere mortal now. I know, I'm like, oh. We're on air. Oh. Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a countdown. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Warriors of the Westfold, um, here we are, hanging out. Thank you for bearing with us last week. We are back to talk Narnia um, with Paul Martin, the maestro of Narnia fans, <laughs> <laughs> as, as he agreed to be called. Um, and with me, of course, is R. Wincaster, Director of News at Middle Earth News. And Hello, everybody. Her assistant, Lily Milos. Hello, everyone. And I'm a L'Oreal, and I'm just a lowly mother right now. <laughs> I'm on I'm on hiatus from the news, but I'm not on hiatus from the podcast. So we're here to talk all things Narnia. Thank you very much for joining us. Is everyone in the YouTube place hanging out, chatting? I can't see it. I haven't yet. I, I need to do it. that. Oh, okay. I figured someone would have it I open. Just I just left. I did. I have oh. it open, and I left a comment. That's okay. All right. Well, hi, everyone who's watching on YouTube. <laughs> All right, sorry, rearranging myself here. Anyway, so so with us today, as I said before, is our special guest, Paul Martin. You want to tell us a little teeny bit about Narnia fans, just to get started, in case for some reason some nerdy people don't know what it is? All right, <laughs> narniafans.com uh, started in 2003, so it's our 10-year anniversary this year. Wow. And Yay! it is... Yay! It's like the biggest fan site of Narnia, uh, like for Narnia fans in the world. With over eight million followers on Facebook. Wow. Whoa. Eight million. I had no idea. <laughs> what did you what did you have to do to bribe them? <laughs> eight million. I just told them like, my story and they loved it, so they showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Eight and that million. that's actually mostly post uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treader um, coming out, so Really? Um, yeah. I had two hundred and fifty thousand wow. when that movie came out, so Wow. wow. So this that, that is was crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty big. Pretty big growth for one movie. That's yeah, awesome. After after the movie, yeah. It, it was um and it shows me that they should have been continuing to make the movies because now I've got the audience to really hammer it, you know, but <laughs> right, that's what we wanted to talk to you about because well my favorite was Prince Caspian. I'll just get that out. Uh, first and foremost, but you know, I really liked the kid they had for Eustace. He was yes. like spot on. Perfect. Awesome kid. So they're so they're just not. I mean, Silver Chair is one of my favorite books. Well, it's complicated. Um, they want to both. Everybody wants to make another Narnia movie, but the estate wants to do the Silver Chair, and the studio wants to do the Magician's Nephew. Um, and they can't come to, they, they're coming at, they're butting heads, and so they couldn't come to any kind of agreement, so they've both backtracked, mm. and neither side can move forward without the other, so um, there's a moratorium that was enacted that um, was enacted as, that as of 2010, when The Voyage of the Dawn Treader was released was when it started, and it lasts five years. So December 2015 would be the earliest that anyone else could release another Narnia film um, without Walden Media. Wow. So, ah. I wonder why they want to do Magician's Nephew. That just seems really off the wall. Doesn't it? Well, yeah. it's, it comes down to simple, simple numbers. Um, the Narnia books, when, uh, like as they were released, um, they, they, like since release, have sold a certain amount. And the Silver Chair is the least selling of all of the Narnia books oh, of all seven. Oh, really? Um, the Magician's Nephew is number two. Uh, and when it comes to the box office of the films, mm -hmm. they line up. Like, if you line up the charts of how much they made to how, how the book sales are, they line up really close. So The Magician's Nephew would be a wildly successful film, whereas mm. The Silver Chair, based on the numbers, probably wouldn't be. Uh. Huh. I really liked the magician's nephew, but and so I'd I'd be excited to see either. Why couldn't they just be like, okay, let's make both? That's what I want. I yeah. I, I think they should either cut their losses and make the horse and his boy, or <laughs> make the magician's nephew and the silver chair at the same time mm -hmm. and save some money, and then release the magician's nephew and the silver chair, or release the magician's nephew and use the money to fund. 
silver chair. <laughs> right. That's what I think should happen. But Interesting. The kid that played Eustace is now, gosh, I think he's like 20 now. And oh, is he too old? <laughs> he, Darn it. he actually he grew about really? six inches after they filmed. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And his voice changed after they filmed, too. So when they Ooh. went back to do ADR, they had to get someone else to, to oh. do some of the vocals. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, wow. That's awful. So, that kid is so great, though. He was he's awesome. I know we just said that, but like, I loved him. He, he was like a, a kid. Total he looked 20 now? Crazy. I think he might be like eighteen to twenty, but he, he has an older brother too that that was always really nice to me too. But um, he, That's really cool. it was just he reminded me of. He, he, I just thought like, okay, he's really tall compared to his brother at the time, so I knew that his brother was gonna like, that Eustace, you know, he was gonna shoot right up, and he did. Um, mm -hmm. Halfway through the movie, they had to when they had to go back earlier in the movie, they had to kind of raise everybody else up. To oh, met, to oh my gosh. His height. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. awesome. So That's wait, amazing. now you just said his brother was really nice to you. So Paul, how many of these actors have you met <laughs> through your Narnia fans? Let's talk about this for a second here. I, I know Paul I, is like majorly connected. I've met uh, Ben uh, Barnes, who played Caspian. Um, Georgie, who played Lucy, and William Mosley. Skander Keynes knows me by sight. Uh, so does Ben. Um, Anna Popplewell, and then Doug Gresham, of course, and um, you name it. The Dawn Treader cast, I met most of them because we were on the set for three days. Um, every every other movie, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I didn't get to meet anybody, but by Prince Caspian, I met all the kids and a lot of the other actors that were in the film, as well as some of the musicians, like, like Regina Spector, who did the song at the close of Prince Caspian. Mm -hmm. um, so I've met in the directors, obviously. But, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Did you meet Ray Fitchie? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but so I would you... love to have met. I would have loved to have met the um, the badger, um, Truffle Hunter, because he's a dwarf in The Hobbit. <laughs> oh yeah, he's Balin. Oh really? No way! No yeah. I didn't know that. Can I, when I saw when I saw the movie, I was yeah. just like, "This badger has an amazing voice." <laughs> <laughs> like, then I saw he was a hobbit, and I was like, or a dwarf. I was like, "No way!" <laughs> that is so cool. This badger has an amazing voice. Is going to be the tagline for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Phrases you think That's you will never one. say. Yep. <laughs> so now, okay. So not only did you meet like a million actors and everything, but when you were on the set, we were down the street. Is you got to propose to your then girlfriend? On the Dawn Treader? Yes, Treader. yes wanna... I did. Um, yeah, that started about uh, four or five months beforehand. I had emailed Doug Gresham and I said, hey, I have an idea. I'd like to propose on um, on the set of the Voyage of the Dawn Treader that you're shooting in a couple months. And he said, let me email you later and I'll, I have an idea. So he wound up emailing me and saying, we've got the Dawn Treader here and I think it'd be the perfect spot. So... We flew down and um, got down to New or to Australia. It was on the Gold Coast, and when we when we arrived at the set, everyone else knew except for her. She had no <laughs> idea that this was happening. <laughs> everyone on the set knew because it was on the call sheet from That's the Friday it. beforehand. <laughs> nice, <laughs> which they nice. gave me the call sheet. I've got it upstairs, but um. <laughs> They they we waited until lunchtime so they cleared off the Don Treaders so that we'd have it pri for like in private completely. Um and Doug Gresham and uh Shane Rangy, who plays a Minotaur in each of the films, he also he stabbed Frodo on Weathertop. Oh. Um, he was the witch king of Angmar and uh he asked if he could be present for it and uh, Ernie Malik the publicist also was there with us and then another guy came up with a camera when we finally boarded the Don Treader it was up these huge stairs and everything I'm nervous as I'll get out I've got this ring in my pocket Aww. that I've been hiding the whole time and so we look around on the Don Treader it's it's literally it's after the 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 battle at the end um, so the Don Treader's kind of in shambles and so we climb up by the helm of the ship. The photographer jumps out of a doorway, starts taking pictures and stuff, and Courtney's thinking this is a normal thing. 
Like, everybody <laughs> that comes up here gets pictures like this. It's actually the, the unit photographer for the film that's sh shooting all the pictures, oh, so they're that's awesome. that's so cool. And, wow. uh, and then we just start looking around, and they all kind of give me the nod. So then I'm like, Courtney, and she's like, what, huh? Because it's just <laughs> a beautiful ship. Courtney, huh? Finally, <laughs> Courtney, and she turns around, and then I go, our first date was to see The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I got Aww. one knee, pulled out the ring and opened it, and I said, will you marry me? And she goes, yes! And then we <laughs> hugged, and everybody clapped, and then the <laughs> Cameron started to interview us right away. Wow. <laughs> but, but we have photos, literally, of the moment where I got down on one knee and opened up the ring. It's like, it's like shot for shot. Oh, that's way that's cool. So, Very cool. Then Doug Gresham, um, like after we took a bunch of pictures up there, he we went down to lunch and Doug Gresham announced to the cast that I had done this and they were all clapping and then for the rest of the week when we were there, everyone was congratulating us and coming up to talk to us and Georgie Henley who played Lucy, she came up to Courtney and goes, well let's see the ring then <laughs> and stuff and she said that and her mom showed up I think a couple days later and... and wanted to see the ring and, and stuff <laughs> and it was just Aww. it was amazing so they said that really energized them for the whole rest of the shoot the, oh, like everybody on awesome. set because they had kind of gotten into the lulls of filming so. Aww, that is so yeah. neat that yeah. blows every like comic con proposal out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, pretty epic. All my friends were mad. <laughs> yeah. All the guys were like, the Their wives were mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was, it Very was good. cool. It was good. I, I, it was completely unique too. It happened like the last week they were shooting on the Don Treader, and then the Don Treader was dismantled. Wow. So, oh. They dismantled the whole ship? Yes, they did. It's in pieces. They could have given it like a little piece. I would have I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Taking this home with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's already it's already getting destroyed anyway. I'll just take a little sliver. Yeah. So was well, it a fully thing, functioning ship? It was it was the top half of the ship on a huge hydraulic lift that allowed them to simulate uh, the ocean. It was on okay. a big port like thing that they built to hold it up right by the ocean so it looked it looked like the ocean when they were on it and they could turn it with the light so as the sun moved around they could turn it to get the shadows right whoa that's it cool. was awesome <laughs> and then all the inside stuff when they went through the doors that was like uh, in a lot like six miles away or something mm -hmm. so it was it was a far different place so it was um, like we went, we went and saw Caspian's cabin when we were there, and we saw the, them dismantling the magician's library, um, which would have been awesome to see like live. And what they had planned for was amazing. For it, it was actually going to be a much bigger thing. Where when Lucy walked down the aisle, there was going to be all these these aquariums with all these creatures swimming around and everything going going down the uh, aisle. There, it would have been amazing, but they didn't actually have the budget to finish that part of it. Ah, oh, man. A bummer. That yeah. would have been awesome. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seeing all that, that would have been great. So at any point when you were down there and you were watching a scene where you like, um, well, really, that's not entirely accurate. If you see in the book, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> did you have any uh, privileges in that way? <laughs> not really. I got to watch them shoot the scene in, uh, with, um, when they were locked up in, um, in the prison um, with Ben and Skander. I got to see them film that, and I talked to, um, I, I can't remember which lord it was, Byrne, I think. I talked to the actor that played him for a while, and he was hilarious. Um, and then Ben and I talked, and Ben told me the whole plot of what they were doing with the film, with the swords and everything. And uh, then Ernie Malik came over and said, what are you telling him? And he's like, I've just told him everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, then secrets. I got to watch them shoot like the closing scenes from, from the film when they were on the Don Treader celebrating. Um, as well as a few other things that actually didn't make the movie or the deleted scenes, which is unfortunate because it was really good stuff. But um, but I also watched Ben almost 
fall off of the side of the Don Treader, and then Lucy uh, or uh, George would get really angry and be like, "Like he can't keep doing this. He almost <laughs> fell," and like yelling at the people on the set. <laughs> Somebody get that man a harness. <laughs> no kidding, because if he would have fallen, it would that would have been it for Ben. Oh it man! On yeah. cement, so. Oh wow! Crap. Because they're actually wearing authentic leather shoes on a wet. So oh. deck. So mm-hmm. he would just, he just slid right towards the edge and people grabbed him before he fell. Oh man. <laughs> wow. wow. It was insane. Wow. Well good, that good on Georgie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That reminds me of us when we went when I went to New Zealand there was a um the part in Lord of the Rings where you see uh Gollum Andy Circus, you know, kinda chase yeah. like a fish down a stream. And mm-hmm. you know, I heard the story. Like, if you watch the background of the of the shot, you know, they're saying, you know, oh, Andy Circus, like, almost, you know, he slipped on ice because the night before it had snowed and they had to melt everything, and you know, and and so when he went to go do the shot, he he slipped on ice and he just kept on going, and they had to catch him, is what I've heard. But oh no, there's like this huge drop. It's a huge waterfall right after there. Nothing to stop you. It's just bloop, gone. And I mean, just being there and looking at them, and like, oh my gosh, that could have been the end of Gollum, end of Andy Circus, like as we know ah. it. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah, that story oh reminds me of that. It's just like ah, <laughs> <laughs> the dangers of acting. If you think yes, it's all indeed. fun and games, oh it's no, not. it's not. In fact, they're they're late. We actually stayed until they finished shooting that Friday, even though we were told you know, to call the car to take us back to the hotel. Like, earlier, we just stuck around and watched them finish out the day and finish out on the Don Treader, which is cool, because then we actually went to Doug Gresham's um, uh, motorhome that he had there, and we hung out with him for, like, an hour, and just wow. us and Doug Gresham. That's now, cool. Now, if, yeah. if anyone's listening and um, doesn't know who Doug Gresham is... He is C.S. Lewis, who wrote the books. Uh, it's his adopted son. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's big. Yes, he is. And we just let him do all the talking because <laughs> when you're there with a man like that, you let them talk. <laughs> it was he is an amazing it was unbelievable. voice. Yes, yes. It was unbelievable. A man that or talked talk- to Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lewis, that's what I was going to say. A man who knew Lewis and Tolkien. Holy crap. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Awesome. It was one of those moments. Yes, Stare it was. Stare in reverence, silence. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if, because I always imagine C.S. Lewis sort of like the professor in uh, the line in the wardrobe. So I wonder if he was constantly telling him, like, what are they teaching you in schools these days? I bet. I bet. <laughs> I, I always imagine that as C.S. Lewis, too. Like, he's definitely got, like, the professor is, is like him. I think. <laughs> yeah. I remember like one of the one of the favorite things he ever said was that like everything he's like, I just have one of those frames that like every everything I wear looks like it came from a thrift store. He's like, It doesn't fit me, like I look all and I was just like, Oh, I totally relate to that. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So Paul, now have you read all of the books? I have. All I've read the nice seven. I've read so, all eight books in Narnia, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well versed. <laughs> so, what's your favorite? My favorite of the seven books is the the last battle. Really? Yes. I have never ever ever met anyone who <laughs> says that's their favorite book. <laughs> Why is it your favorite book? I just nope. I, well, I read it when I was in seventh grade. We read it in class, and that was the one. If, like of all like of all the books that we had read, that was the one where where I got what it was what it was actually about, and where I didn't like where everything else was so symbolic that at the time I hadn't yet noticed those things, but that one all of a sudden that's where it hit me. <laughs> so. As late as Jesus. Yeah, that's where it finally hit Because <laughs> I'd only watched the animated Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, so I didn't get it from that. Because I was just like, okay, why is Lucy going off with the little devil guy? Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> in, that, in that one, Tumnus is red. 
So he looked like the uh -huh. devil to me. So I'm like, uh, okay, why is he a good guy? <laughs> Confused. <laughs> and then we read The Magician's Nephew, but that really didn't, I had nothing clicked from that one. But then in school, we, then we read The Last Battle. And it's like I had no, no knowledge of anything between. I didn't know about Prince huh. Caspian, Horse and His Boy, Silver Chair, anything. I knew those three stories until I finally read all seven. Huh. I am, I am really... I'm I'm seriously floored. I'm like blown away. <laughs> Lily Arwen, did you guys, uh, wait? Lily, you've read them. Arwen, have you read them? You were you were I, young, right? I I was very young. So yeah. Um, you. Do you have favorites? I though? read them. I read three, and I got so mad at C.S. Lewis because he didn't. He was taking away characters. <laughs> I was like, "What? What is this? I have, I love Lucy, and she's not in here anymore. And now I have Eustace, really, mm -hmm. Eustace." <laughs> no, I was like, oh. And I, so I, I was like, I quit in a rage, and I never <laughs> finished. I never yeah. finished reading. That's them. what most people say about the movies. They, they, I get like, they say they want those characters to just come back, and they're like, they can rewrite them. Who cares? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's hard because you do you you know you connect with with a, um, mm -hmm. a character and then it's like I have to get used to some new character. I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah. Uh, yeah so I I only read like three, and then that was all I could. I was just too upset. But <laughs> or when gets to horse and his boy, and she's like, "Who are <laughs> these people?" <laughs> I, go off, yeah. I, I would... remember nothing about horse and his boy. <laughs> Oh, well, no? that like one that. would be a good one for, for you to read then, because that one actually has cameos from, from some of the kings and queens of Narnia. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I know I read it when I was, you know, like eight or something, but I don't have any memory of what happens. I'm assuming there's a horse and, and a boy. And it talks, yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've got. <laughs> and it takes place, is it during Prince Caspian's reign? It takes is place that... during the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, during the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. During the okay. reigns of, um, you know, the Pevensies. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so after Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. During. But during. Well, you right get before, dirty on me here, Paul. The, um, <laughs> it's before they chase after the, the stallion. Right, right. Uh, or the, uh, the, stag. Yeah, the stallion. The stag. The stag, yeah. right. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I so, love all this geekiness. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oriel, what about you? I know you're you're too surprised about the last battle. So, what would you pick? I am too surprised because no one ever says the last battle ever. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, my favorite is Prince Caspian. That's nice. yeah. easily my favorite. I love the moment when Caspian's up on the tower and the professor or the tutor or whatever he is. He reveals himself. You know, he's like, "Oh, it's all true. Like all the legends are true." I just like get goosebumps even thinking about it. I love that mm -hmm. part. I love it. Love it. Love it. Do you have a favorite, Lily? Um, it would have to be Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or Magician's Nephew, I think. I, I just say that because I know I've read those the most. <laughs> but um, but I also, I like the silver chair a lot. And, uh, you know, we haven't brought up the BBC ones yet. <laughs> I was so, just going to bring yeah. that up. <laughs> so I think I everyone liked, is like... <laughs> I like the silver chair. I mean, okay, you know, the crazy monsters aside, you can fast forward through the ghouls flying through the air. But um, I liked, I don't know, I liked uh, Peter and Lucy in particular in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I grew up on those, you know. I had such mm -hmm. a crush on Peter. So. <laughs> Did you really? Uh -huh, Aha, <laughs> the totally. truth. <laughs> yeah, the truth comes out. I didn't even <laughs> read them until college. They oh, never yeah. Been. Yeah, I didn't So that them. was not a good time to be introduced to the BBC <laughs> version. I would, no, I saw the BBC Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe in eighth grade. For some Still a reason. bit old for it, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. My my English teacher was like, here, watch this. And I was just like, this is horrible. I'm never going to be interested in this. You know, so, but then I didn't even remember it until I came back later and I read the books and I was like, oh yeah, that thing. Like, Aslan's like, you know, the, the fake nose, you yeah. know. Oh man. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> okay. <And> that poor <laughs> little girl who plays Lucy has like a oh. word, right, you know. Lucy. I mean, oh. Yeah. oh, Aslan. Oh, oh yeah, Lucy. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. she's cute. Though the, um, yeah. the the beavers always weirded me out. I was like, those are adult <laughs> size beavers. Yeah, they got those glove claws. This is how they walk. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Walk, oh, like, I've seen their hands are like this. Yeah. I know Mogrim this. weirded me <laughs> out too. <laughs> Which one? Mogrim, the Mogrim. the wolf that oh, turned yeah. into like the human. Oh wolf. yeah. 
And yeah. and a buddy of mine, when when they were gonna do the new ones, asked me, "So are they gonna have the wolf like morph into a human guy in the new one?" I was like, "That's not <laughs> yes. even in the book." <laughs> like, oh yes. Okay. Oh, that was so, awesome. <laughs> my my kids actually got the BBC series Narnia series for Christmas this year, wow. and Ooh. it has been lucky his you. <laughs> According to my five-year-old son, he was just like, what in the world is this? <laughs> he's just like, like, what, they're beavers? And he looks at me, he's like, those are not beavers, Mom. <laughs> those are not beavers. <laughs> that's the only so appropriate out. reaction, honestly. Yes. I think that's the right thing for him to say. We were so <laughs> it's funny, they were yeah. actually going to finish the, that series, but then it, the BBC actually canceled it. Because it was too religious late after that, apparently. Really? Oh, yeah. After, after mm -hmm. that, it was too religious. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like, um, <laughs> yeah. you got the whole part, dying, right? coming back to life yeah. thing. Yeah. The straight up Jesus wasn't very religious, but <laughs> yeah. somehow the silver chair. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Well, I mean, I can see why how um, Last Battle might be problematic. In, in yeah. fact, whenever I first heard, you know, long ago that they were going to do Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I was like, how are they going to do that last book? Like, that is going to be ridiculous. You Me know? too. That's why when I <laughs> talked to Andrew Adamson, I was like, like, I asked him what one he would want to direct the most. Um, <laughs> and he said, The Magician's Nephew. And I said, well, then you can do that one, and I'll do The Last Battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yes, please. Yeah, <laughs> as long as it's not on my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, imagine the BBC versions with someone, like, you know, running around in an ape suit. And I imagine the donkey would be, like, two people. Like, one guy would oh. be the back, and one would be the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh. They'll do it as huge oh, puppets, kind of like The Lion yep. King. Oh, oh man, just, just going oh, back yeah. and watching the BBC versions and, and the witch is just, you know, she's, <laughs> fools, how dare you, you know, <laughs> duh, 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 duh. She's just, oh my gosh, she's just like, oh. And then they bring her back for the, the lady of the green kirtle in the silver chair. Mm -hmm. and, and there, I mean, no one really knows who the witch is in the silver chair. People have their own guesses because... Who knows where another witch came from? But clearly, they, she came from somewhere. Mm. So, I yeah. did like the new version of the the White Witch. Mm -hmm. Um, I Tell thought the they story. did a really good job. Yeah, that was oh, really good. Yeah. Do you know what excellent. my very very favorite thing was in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was Santa. The way that they did Santa, I was just like, yes. I love him. Like I was just like overwhelmed. I was like, that's Santa for real. I think they got the real Santa. <laughs> I did too. No, that was excellent. I love the Christmassy music that starts and and then you just can tell it's magical and it's it's Santa Claus. Yeah, that was awesome. So. Well, so of the new ones, what is everybody's favorite? <laughs> I'm going to be controversial. <laughs> no, Go for it. Uh, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Yeah, I figured. I mean, you said last battle, so we had to expect something unexpected, right? Yep. <laughs> Voyage of the Tr That's because you got to be on the deck of the Voyage of the Yeah, I, was I think say, you're a bit you're biased. biased. I'm biased. biased, but I also did think that it was it was my favorite of the adventures, and I thought that the acting was actually the best in that one, personally. Um... I just thought that the that for whatever reason Mike, Michael Apted was able to get great performances out of all the actors, and plus Eustace was just phenomenal um, in it. And I don't know, like some of the stuff that I had seen also before, uh, like uh, gosh, in the January before it came out, I got to see like ten minutes of footage of it, and there was a scene there that I saw that wasn't in the movie, but it had Ben Barnes talking about how he didn't feel like he measured up as king. Um, and they didn't they didn't make it in the movie. And um, But that, that, I think, influences my opinion of it, too, even though it's not in the actual film, because that scene in the film would have just been, like, it was awesome. But I don't know. I, I liked the adventure of it, and I don't know. I just thought it was beautiful to look at. I don't know. That's me. <laughs> that's okay. You're allowed to. You yeah. can have that. <laughs> yeah. We allow that. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Lily? Definitely.
Prince Caspian. And I know, you know, it didn't do as well in the box office, but for me, the first one, I don't know, I was expecting, I'm, I was older when I saw it, you know, I was at least in college, I can't remember when it came out, and uh, so it wasn't as epic as I wanted it to be, because I wasn't a kid, and you know, it's epic enough for kids, but I liked the sort of political intrigue aspects of Prince Caspian, mm -hmm. um, just more, you know, it was, it's like Game of Thrones very, very light, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just liked that more. It had kind of a darker feel, and I just liked it. So, <laughs> that's me. That's very good, though. Yeah. All right, you guys. I don't really know. <laughs> I like, I actually, I, I enjoyed all of the new ones. Um, I thought they were good. I, the mo the one I watched most recently was the first film because when I was in New Zealand, we also visited some uh, scenes of the um, the Aslan's um, camp. Yes, Aslan's camp and the battle. It the, was the last the, battle. That's yep. what it was. The last battle scene is you know not the mm -hmm. move, not the book, but that scene. Um, <laughs> and yeah, um, and that was really cool. Uh, to be there and see that it was a, a really cool place, but um, uh, so we watched the movie on the way because it was it was a little bit of a drive, so we watched part of the movie on the way to uh, to these scenes, so we got to see the scenes and then go oh, yeah. and be mm -hmm. in cool. a place. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do I do like I think one of my favorite scenes, of course, is Lucy being introduced into you know meeting Tumnus and all that. Mm -hmm. I just I really enjoy that. Yeah. But then there are other parts too. Good point. I love mm -hmm. um you know, just the wonder of it going through the closet. I mean, when you're a kid, like I remember reading that, you know, that part in the book as a kid was just like, What? This would be so awesome. And um so I love that. I love the um and what which one is the last one that they did where the, the one foot people where they like jump? That's the yeah, that's the voice yeah. of the Don Treader, yep. I I that was like one of the most biggest parts that that stuck to me when I read the books, and so in the movie that was so cool to see because I was just like, <laughs> oh, I remember I was freaked out when I was reading this in the you know in the book, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, There's they had so the people. hardest time designing those guys too. Did like, they coming up with how they look? I believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they're like the craziest things, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I could really pick one because I I really I really did enjoy all of them. The only thing that I that I didn't enjoy that I was like ah was the uh, um the whole Lucy and um oh Prince Caspian like romance. Oh not yeah, Lucy. yeah. Uh, Susan. Susan. Yeah. Susan. Susan and and yeah, and I was just like really. Come on, yeah. guys. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm going to shoehorn that in there. That, that, was, <laughs> that was funny because after I was talking to the, the screenwriters about that, and they were like, all right, let's look at this movie poster. So we walked over to the movie poster, and they're like, all right, see him, see her. We can't not have them kiss. <laughs> and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> because uh, why? Because why? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so like, now we know that's really how decisions are made in Hollywood. They're like, <laughs> we just had to. Of course. <laughs> Obviously, they're they're you know sort of the same age. Why not? You know, right. so I just oh yeah, that was just so annoying. I was like, really? Do we have to go through yeah. this whole thing? And the but only thing I could think of. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, go <laughs> I was gonna say the only thing I could think of was uh, if. Like, say, if I made the last battle, I would actually almost flashback to that to show kind of one of the reasons why Susan was not allowed back into mm -hmm. into Narnia, basically, as as mm -hmm. kind of uh, for foreshadowing of the fact that she kind of ditches Narnia. That's what I would have done. Huh. So as a as a movie based were way of doing it, where it's where it's PG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I like that though, because then it's like, well, you know, she kissed somebody, so um, yeah, naughty, true. naughty, not yeah, allowed back true. in. <laughs> oh, I mean, no how, happy heaven how for can Susan. You do that child friendly though. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You have a point. <laughs> All right, L'Oreal, what's your favorite? You don't have to ask me because I. Okay, well, I'm just gonna tell you, I was totally disappointed <laughs> by like by all of them. I was, I really, really had high hopes for Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and 
it fell so flat to me. And I was just, I like, because I had just come off, of, you know, it was like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, like everything, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just felt, I really, I don't know, I cannot even put my finger on it. Um, yeah. I mean, I like, the, I definitely love aspects of it. It's really pretty, you know, every, it looks perfect, everything. I, I don't know, I just, it really, it didn't, there was something missing, and I still don't know what it is. I can't, I, I really can't put my finger on it. And especially Prince Caspian, I felt that way. You know, that's like my favorite book, and I was just like... No, or yeah, just yeah, not not Don Trent or Prince Caspian. I was just, uh, I was I was so disappointed with that. If I had to pick one, I would say Don Treader, mm-hmm. because I feel like I I agree. Like the acting, like the kid who plays Eustace, I I will love that kid forever. Like yeah. I will I will mm-hmm. follow him off a cliff. Like he is such a good actor, and um, <laughs> and he was perfect. He was the perfect Eustace, and I think like I said, like they're really good at making things pretty. And that's pretty much what Don mm-hmm. Treader is. It's like, here's a pretty island, here's another pretty island, here's something <laughs> crazy, you know what I mean? It's just, like, yeah. various, like, interesting things to look at, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that that played to their strengths Yes. Um, as, as filmmakers. So that, if mm-hmm. I had to pick one, I would say that. Nice. Very yeah, fair. Sorry. Very, I, feel, no. I feel bad saying <laughs> no, that. No, very I, fair. I was, very fair. No, I was sad. I was sad not to leave. I was like, I was like on the street team. I don't know if you remember the the call. Like they the did that. Team. I yeah. Was on oh the yeah. Team. I was on the. I had like all the posters. I was like going around to churches, and I was like, here, like have these free stuff. Like totally gonna be the best movie. And then I, I like went to like the preview or whatever, you know. And I got to sit in like the, the leather seats, you know, like up. And I was oh, like, yeah. yes, that'd be awesome. And I just sat there, and I was like, oh, geez, like. Oh. <laughs> I feel bad. Well, fortunately, fortunately for them, like it made seven hundred million dollars anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, so they yeah. did. They did very. I'm well. glad. I'm. I'm glad because I do. I did want to see them keep continue to be made. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted to. I was, and they're certainly better than BBC by far. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, I can't show this to my children because they'll laugh right. at me. Yeah. The, the yes, my kids do. Then, Mm-hmm. Is is how would you con- like if if they let's say they were going to reboot them completely, mm-hmm. what medium would you pick to do it? Like, would you do live action again, or would you do oh, something else like I animation? You meant, like, would I do a TV show? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a I was TV like show. radio, <laughs> radio if, drama. <laughs> if they would like tr- animate it like traditional animation, I feel like that would be a strong way to go. I wouldn't want to see it like lots of CG or anything, right. but I think it, you know. But I, I mean, I liked that it. it was live action. I wanted, you know, it was. I wanted it to be live action. It made sense. We can do it now, you know. Mm-hmm. But, mm. That's a good question. That's a hard one because, um, you know, I wouldn't want it to be all Avatar, like right. All I exactly. think CG, um, but obviously there are giants and minotaurs and all sorts of things. Um, gosh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll just say radio play, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> well, I'll actually have yeah. thoughts on it, too. Okay, it's, let's hear um, it. There's out. a movie coming out in the spring from, I think Sony is doing it, and it's called Epic. Yeah. And uh-huh. I watched yeah. the trailer for that, and there, there was a new trailer that came out where the girl's going into this house, and it's this old house and everything, and then she ends up in this magical land and stuff that basically is in their backyard or something. And there's all these magical creatures. And I was just like, if I wanted to see Narnia again, like, but if it was all like CG animated like this, that's what I'd want it to look like. <laughs> like, it just looked magical. It feels magical. And and I would I would do it that way because when we lose characters or actors get too old, technically... Then mm-hmm. we then we're so connected to an actor having to be that character that we can't ever possibly think of anyone else giving them that or being in that role. Like when they do the silver chair, eventually um, they're going to have to recast. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's unfortunate because we had the perfect actor to play him. But with a CG animated movie or, or traditionally animated, you don't have to worry about that. Disney right. casts like a new kid, new kid to play Peter Pan, and you can't tell the difference in his voice. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I would. That's what I would do. Is I would animate it for sure. That's if a I good was doing idea. All seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. then you'd get it too. <laughs> like it's, you'd be able to finish it. It's interesting that you bring up Epic because I loved the first trailer I saw for that, but I think 
85% of it was the music that they yes. used. Yes. <laughs> I like the music too. So well. I like the song. I can't think of the, the band it is, but I have, I totally downloaded the song afterward. And I felt like with Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, there was some music in a trailer I heard. And it was better than all the music. I like Harry Gregson Williams, who did the, the music, but it was better than all the music in the movie. And I was like, I want, I want that <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> and so, so uh, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you can't really tell how much you like it because they're good at manipulating trailers to make mm -hmm. you want to see something. And so mm -hmm. that's how I feel about Epic. I'm like, eh, let's let's see because mm -hmm. uh, the whole movie can't be that way. <laughs> I know. I wish. Who's putting out <laughs> Epic? I can't uh, remember who's who's Sony, doing that. Sony, He's a... Sony Animation, um, and it's the team that did like Rio and uh, Ice Age, which I've seen Ice Age and haven't. Seen oh, Rio, Ice but... Age. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. we have all the Ice Age movies. I could quote them constantly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. um, uh, yeah, I saw I saw the um, uh. The trailer for Epic, but yeah, it was like it was like the the music made it more epic than the the what I was seeing was actually you know what uh. I mean? I was like I was like oh wow, this music is amazing. This trailer is eh. you know. <laughs> yeah. I am I am so easily manipulated by music. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not even. Funny. I am too. Like, music just by itself I... has made me cry. <laughs> music can make yes. or break a movie, actually, yeah. too, and that right. that could be something that was might have been missing for for you um, from those movies. Then it's definitely like, possible. Like if, say, Howard Shore or I mean, even John Williams had done with his brass. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? bombastic. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you wonder what it would be like. Like Voyage of the Dawn Treader, everyone was saying, you know, the music on that was composed by someone else completely, mm -hmm. um, not Harry Gregson Williams. But they only did callbacks to the themes from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and Prince Caspian, like, twice. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the moments where they where it was necessary to, but the rest of the time they just used the Don Treader theme, which wasn't as magical as it probably could have been or should have been. Mm -hmm. um, so that, music is a big piece. But it's, it, yeah, it's I huge. do oh. remember being kind of disappointed in the soundtrack, like I, when I was watching, you know, any of the trailers for those movies. I was like, you know, they just like slightly missed the mark. I felt like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in most of them. That's, that's yeah, really, that's a good point. I'd never even considered that as like a main thing. Yeah, David Arnold, I think, did it, or yeah, he did. He does the James Bond movies. Apparently. Oh well, then totally <laughs> appropriate. <Friends. Yeah>. <laughs> 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 but I you think you know. Think of Howard Shore in the beginning of like Lord of the Rings. Okay, like we've all seen The Hobbit, right? Oh yeah. Oh, and Laura, you go, you've and seen you it sat. Then? Yeah. I did finally the theater, get to see it. <laughs> and the and the little you know new line thing shows up, and then it starts off with the music, and you're just like. You're just and taking back in the Shire. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> and it was the music. It was the music, mm -hmm. you know, that whole concerning hobbits, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, the first part of that is just like, do 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 You know, you're just like, oh, yeah. hobbiting. If I'm we're going to bring up the music, though, my biggest complaint about the music in that movie is that they reused so many themes from The Lord of the Rings. Yes, I was like, oh, um, oh, this is the battle at Weathertop, whatever you're doing right now. You know, this is <laughs> this is called for. Like, I, I get reusing the Hobbit theme, you know, but mm -hmm. there were bits when I was like, no, no, you, you should have just written something new. <laughs> it bothered me. Actually, I agree, I agree with that. I agree yes. with that. There was, one, there was one part where they were in the, the um, oh, what do you call it? Goblin Town, and there was, you know, things were happening. Uh, chaos was ensuing, and they were using the same sound as when they were in Moria and mm -hmm. the Belrog, and and they were like going over the bridge, the, yeah. the, the bridge of Casa Doom. Right. They're, same sound. I was like, come on, that's <laughs> cheating. I want new stuff. Yes. <laughs> I, I wanted new stuff for most of it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I did, I did, I did like that. Hobbiton had the kind of the same sound. There was a little, yeah. you know, a few different yeah. sounds there, but like I was like. Yes, Hobbiton mm -hmm. needs this. This is Hobbiton, you know? Right, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. If I can go even farther off topic really quickly, because you brought <laughs> up John Williams. Do it. Uh, I, have this, I have this question that's bothering me. So, yeah. uh, you know, J.J. Abrams is now going to be doing 
uh, the Star Wars movie. And uh, so he <laughs> always works with Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino. Yeah. I love him, but he has a very you know specific sound. I think he did a great job with Star Trek. Uh, but it's so iconic to have John Williams do Star Wars. Mm -hmm. What do you think will happen? Do you think it'll be John Williams? I mean, people would riot in the streets, Good right? But, <laughs> but will he be like, no, I always work with Michael Giacchino. I don't know. I can't decide. I don't even know what I want. No, I do. I, I want them to work together on <laughs> well, it, that'd actually. Be excellent. <laughs> well, I mean, John, how old is John Williams right now? He's it's a very sad old. thing to say. Right. Um, and uh, depending on when they they get the movie finished, if it's 2015 or 2016, depending, he, I mean, he may be retired by then, which means it'd have to be like a Michael Giacchino. Right. But Michael Giacchino, he's, he doesn't actually have a specific style, as right, far he, as I know. He, he did he Incredibles. Did the Incredibles. Super uh, Yeah, he's, he's kind like, of all over the place. He's all right. over the place with his music. So if there's anyone I think that's capable of matching the John Williams sound and not only not just emulating it but making it his own, mm -hmm. I think it might be him. Yeah. Um, because like Super Eight is a soundtrack that I just love because it, it emulates like E. T. and Close Encounters and, yeah. and like movies of the early eighties. Mm -hmm. And doesn't actually it would probably wouldn't even fit in with movies of today except for like that one because that was such a thing. But then he also did all of like Alias and Lost, and was able to yeah. like capture all of the emotion there. And and he, there's something about his scores that are just um, he's he's become one of my favorite composers, I think, because of his ver variety that he has. I don't know. Yeah, sorry, guys, this question. is totally not Narnia related. <laughs> no, it's but okay. I, I've been, I've been I have to get it out. Speaking <laughs> out to over the uh, the the new Star Wars developments this week as well. So oh, it's uh, I was excited that you brought it up. <laughs> I'm, um, <laughs> like, I am so. And Laurel's like, I am not amused. <laughs> um, Star Wars, one, right? <laughs> I am pumped. <laughs> and I am pumped that J.J. Abrams is directing for because I'm a big fan of Abrams and. It, like his music box talk on TED.com is or music box um, mystery box talk is amazing and it says everything about why he's the, actually the perfect guy to direct Star Wars. I haven't so, seen that. I'll have to check that out. It's phenomenal. He talks about mystery boxes. Those are the mysteries that you want to know that are kept locked tight in a box and mm. you just need to know so what's in the box so you want to open up that box but then, but then it's boxes. a smoke but then, monster yeah the, exactly I was just going to say it. that I said except for Lost which was <laughs> oh, like, I wish that box had never been opened even, well the, I, can't, the, I don't want to talk about it open all the boxes on Lost <laughs> well, that's true there I don't think they were even I don't think they even had the boxes to begin with no. I think they just told us no. they had boxes they were like well, we have boxes we totally have boxes and the boxes will be awesome and then I watched the Lost episode <laughs> and, then, and I cried yeah. And I How punched every seasons? baby, and I <laughs> kicked every kitten, and and for weeks I couldn't even come out. <laughs> it's I don't funny, trust him, and I, I'm glad that I, I don't loved, care about stories. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I loved it, actually. I you loved are. the last episode. <laughs> you're an anomaly. Uh, you're, you're one of those Yeah, people. you are an anomaly. <laughs> I'm, I'm I actually that. one of the 50% that loved it. <laughs> yeah. The 50% no, that hated it is just the loudest. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Uh, no, 50%. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, it's I not 1%. <laughs> Look, Maybe he I means watched, 0.5 of I watched, I, watched, yeah. I watched every single episode faithfully and everything. I loved all of it. That last episode just left me going, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I know. I had we were like we had like a party and stuff, you know. Oh, like yeah. you know, we were. I mean, we were at a party and we were just like everyone, everyone, <laughs> just doing that like at the end. That was yeah. it. That was I it. watched. I mean, speaking of entirely happy, out of duty. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh no no no! I was just saying about like Susan not going to Happy Heaven. Oh you yeah. Know, at the end of the, you know, it's like this. It's like well, Ben's not going to Happy Heaven. He still has a little bit of purgatory. You know, and we're all doing that. Yeah, I. Like, oh. oh, I stopped watching Lost sometime in season three, and my brother was like, "No, it's good. You should watch it again." So I caught up, and I was like, "Okay, okay, I'm glad I caught up." So season six, I was like, 
this is I don't care but you know it might get good so I'm gonna keep watching <laughs> everyone's watching it's a thing you know yeah. and then I was like by the last episode I was like no totally not worth it I shouldn't yeah. have watched any of this last season <laughs> I know you see that's why like every time you guys are like oh and have you do you watch this and have you seen this and I'm like no because I was burned and I, cannot, <laughs> that I cannot give um, my heart to another television series like that. Like, I mean, I'm watching Doctor Who, and I have faith, like, that it's okay. Yes, but Lost, Doctor I mean, Who. Lost, like, we started watching during season three, so we caught up, like, all, like, on DVD. We're like, watch, 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 watch. And then we watched it, you know, for the last three seasons, it was on TV. You know, and my heart was just torn out and, and trampled, and I, I have can't. the Blu-ray box set. <laughs> We, nice. we went out, like, the next week and sold all of the DVDs. Yeah, really seriously. Cool. I think I donated mine to the really? library, I think. Oh, wow. oh that's painful. Wow. I was like, oh, someone else will enjoy this because I never Well, will. listen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Fringe? Which one? I mean, Did you watch Fringe? Fringe? Oh, no. Uh, I've Fringe? never watched that. Nope. nope. Mm. I don't hear good That was a J.J. Abrams, too, actually. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I really enjoyed Fringe, actually. I I had a, I loved that. But, um... The, okay, I mean, I'm in the defense of J.J. Abrams regarding Lost, Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof actually ran the show. I know. Right. Abrams created it. I know. But still. <laughs> <laughs> he should have had the boxes with that. He should have given them the boxes or something. Something obviously <laughs> needed to happen, and he did not interview. Okay, well. but here's if the you're deal. not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> the here's the at all. <laughs> here's the deal, though, guys. Okay, you know, so yeah, there's boxes, mystery boxes, or whatever. Yes. But this is Star Wars, something yes. that's already figured out. Mm -hmm. So he just has to put it to film. That type of thing. Yes, no. so actually, he's actually what, not even writing it. Yeah, that's one thing. Right. I think well, too many people yeah. are like, oh, there's going to be a smoke monster. And I'm like, well, he's not writing it. No, so. he's not writing no. it. He's putting it together. The guy that's so, writing it wrote Toy Story 3. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> so you got, you so, got a guy that's able to pull emotion out of, out of toys <laughs> and, and your love of these toys and, and everything. And then you got a guy that's able to pull emotion in five minutes at the beginning of Star Trek. Mm. <laughs> a series oh my that I gosh, never knew that, that I'd was, ever watch anything. <laughs> I was sobbing on both of those yeah. accounts. <laughs> Poor Thor. Toy Story included. <clears throat> True confessions here on uh, Warriors. <laughs> Why am I yet. crying over toys? I don't know. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, that's because the, that's we have the to. The Toy Story 2 scene yes. with, with Jesse. <laughs> I, I heard oh. that, I, I was watching an interview, it was about Pixar, and that uh, Tim Allen and Tom Hanks, they got together to watch that scene, and they were like two grown men crying over a, a, <laughs> a girl doll. I mean, we were weeping. <laughs> like, Aww. That's a good one. It's so, so good. I think, okay, you know, despite Lost and all that stuff, J.J. Abrams, compared to the last three movies of Star Wars that we've oh, yeah. had to view and swallow, I mean, come on. That's, I think you that's can't get any lower. I mean, there's nowhere to go but up. Yeah. <laughs> I would and agree. I'm not, even, I'm not even into Star Wars, and I can say that. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, you, can, you can get lower. The Star Wars holiday special. Well, okay. Aww, yeah. but that's, <laughs> that's, like, you know, that's, that's funny. <laughs> I've funny. never Have made it through it? that. I, I've never once made it all the way through. I've tried. <laughs> Get and a little farther. But... Make, you can make it, if you can make it through the Phantom Menace and you can't make it through the holiday special. Yeah. That says something about the Phantom Menace, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it says more about the watchable. <laughs> Oh, Good times. <laughs> but yeah, so okay, well, we have a little bit of time left. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Should we get our geek <laughs> pick out of the way? We'll get, we'll get it back to Narnia let's, a little bit. Yeah, yeah let's do it oh, since, actually, we, since we actually have picks. Though, Aloriel, your geek pick, right, is um, with something cool, the Hogwarts thing, right? Are we doing that? Oh, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, I didn't even think about that because I was trying to find something. Narnia related, and I did find uh, the Aslan photo spread <laughs> that I forgot about. Um, so I want you guys to go and look at this. I don't even know how, how wow. to tell. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes, okay? But it's yeah, it's um, Life magazine did a photo spread. I think it's like from the '60s or '70s. I've seen it before. There's no details in the actual blog post right now, um, but just this family that has a lion living with them, and so the pictures of all like it's like in the bed 
or it's like at the desk and like the mom's like stepping over it, you know, to get to the fridge. It's just like a full grown like male lion just hanging out in the house. It's the best. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I want that. Lions are my favorite animal. And is that silly? Really? Favorite? Uh, Thirty one. Should I should I have a favorite animal? I don't know. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good then. Okay. Well, in that case, I, I'll just I'll just put it out there. Yeah. Lions are my favorite you, animal. And you don't this have is, a like, favorite. My fantasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, I don't have you a can favorite one. Lion? <laughs> oh, I was gonna I say you don't totally, have a yeah. favorite Power Ranger. That's that's age inappropriate. No. But okay. an animal is okay. That's easy. Nobody I never had give a Power Ranger. I was slightly too old. Books. She'll start hating lions. <laughs> no, I I have read the first two books. Oh, first something's two. wrong with you. Yes. No, nothing's wrong with me. <laughs> Nothing is wrong with me. Game of Thrones. Only that I haven't finished team. the series. It's great. You should. Okay, so my okay. No, wait, I'm sorry because I wasn't expecting to do this. So you guys go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I got then. distracted. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. Ar Arwen, you should do yours because they're very specifically related to the movies. Okay. Well, I have geek picks. Um, my geek kick comes from. <laughs> sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, stands for a wool, which I was telling, uh, Aloria and Lily and mm -hmm. Paul before we were mm -hmm. um, on the on live that I got to meet the owners of Stansboro Wool when I was down in New Zealand. They are awesome. Um, father and daughter team were there uh, at the Middle Earth Market for the Hobbit premiere and um, they were just really cool and they have really exclusive stuff. Um, they have like one machine. That's it. Like in the entire world there's no other one except for this machine that makes the intricate patterns that you can find on their on their um, material. So that is why it's so expensive in case you go to their site and freak out. Just breathe. <laughs> that is <Yeah>. why. <laughs> um, I mean it's ridiculously expensive but it's just you know you can't get it anywhere else so high demand. Um, but anyways they were contracted to make uh, Lucy's cape. She has a beautiful red cape in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So they um, they make that and then they also make Mr. Tumnus' scarf which is my personal favorite. Um, uh, so yeah, those are my geek picks. If you want to go visit their website, go to stansburwold.co.nz. I think Is that right? I could knit you that scarf. Really? <laughs> I could knit. Could you yeah, do absolutely. That? Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Okay, easily. for my birthday present, pretty please. I do not have that kind of time between now and then. Last <laughs> it. Three month old. Anyone? Yeah. I okay. Just... Okay. I'll come over and babysit, and yep. then you come over. You know, because <laughs> yeah. we're next door. Yeah. <laughs> it's only like a ten hour drive. Yeah. I could totally knit this. That's no. That's this. I, I can I'm do jealous anyway. that you could do that. I'm sorry. You could do it too. Anyone can no. knit. No. I firmly believe Anyone it. Yeah. Nope. Anyone can knit. It's the new knit. movie from Pixar, right? Anyone, <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> Anyone can knit. Anyone can knit. It's true. Totally. It's totally what true. about you, Lily? Well, I also picked a. Um, it was just a red scarf on Etsy, basically, to be your Mr. Tumnus scarf, and it's much cheaper. Um, though, if you have a L'Oreal make it, she'll give it to you for free. I hear. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. I think it's just one of those iconic things. There aren't too many costume pieces, I think, that are iconic mm -hmm. about Narnia, but there's his scarf. Um, and then the other one is. I mean, we live in a place, I live in Colorado, we don't have too many exciting lampposts here. I know if you live in like uh, places like the East Coast and maybe Europe, you've got cooler lampposts, but we don't have any here. So anytime I see anything remotely like the lamppost, I'm like, oh, yay, lamppost. So uh, <laughs> if you want to find a way to incorporate lampposts in your everyday life, I found these lamppost salt and pepper shakers on Etsy. There are some on eBay too. They're actually quite prolific if you ever are in the market for new salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll put awesome. the link in the description. Yep, that's, uh, that's awesome. Any way to incorporate that. <laughs> there are lamp posts in my neighborhood, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, nice. and there's no Lucky. there's no wires going across, no big phone poles or anything with wires. It's all underground. So the lamp posts in the winter, like it is right now. It just looks like Narnia out my front door. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. That's you need to get some photos. Yeah, I was just going to say, pics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take some photos. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh, Photo or it didn't happen. Exactly. All right, I found I found the Hogwarts number. So word on Pinterest um, is that you can call Hogwarts at one seven eight one four two seven eight one. 
452-4077. And there's apparently a whole automated system that you can go through and listen to all the options. Apparently it's like the best thing ever. That's so, um, so cool. I, have, I haven't tried it yet. I just found it this afternoon and um, I was busy babying. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I haven't yet tried it, That's but apparently, awesome. apparently it's not a joke. It's like for real. Yeah, I'm excited. I wonder if they made it with like Google Voice or something. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I have no clue what they did. Okay, That's listeners, insane. we want to know. Call that number. Yeah, let, let us, us know. know. Yes. Let us know. Oh, can I? Oh wait, I have one more thing that I wanted to talk about real quick. Go for it. One more find. Go for it. So, and I found this on Pinterest too. Somebody made a little um. This is this is Hobbit now, okay? Somebody made a little Sebastian lives illustration. Like, do you remember the little hedgehog? <laughs> yeah, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sebastian lives, and they're like the most stressful part. I know, and it's just like a little head. It's like a happy little hedgehog, you know, like smiling. <laughs> Sebastian <laughs> That's lives. <awesome. laughs> That's awesome. They're uh-huh. doing bumper stickers and T-shirts. Yes, like start yeah. a movement. <laughs> Sebastian lives. <It's> so good. <laughs> I'm going to scour the Lord of the Rings movies to see if there's a little hedgehog somewhere in there now. <laughs> <laughs> Running Find along the hedgehog. In the he's he's yeah. crossing the road when, when the Black Rider's coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> good well, times. So, Paul, we've talked about your site. Have you had a chance to plug it? Tell everyone the... The website URL and your Twitter and your Facebook and whatever else you have. Uh, the website is narniafans.com. Twitter is at narniafans, and the Facebook is actually called Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, okay. Mm. That's good to know. That's different than I thought. It is. <laughs> yep. The the one that I made that's at that's Narnia fans on Facebook. I just did that so no one else would take it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. And that one got gotcha. up to 16,000 people, but I don't really use it as much as I uh, as I use the other one, the Chronicles of Narnia. So, yeah, gotcha. so that's where you'll okay. find me. And I'm actually on Google Plus, too, and Pinterest, and I've actually got an Instagram for it, but I don't really do that one much yet. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what a world. Fans. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. We should mention, shouldn't we, that Middle Earth News is on Pinterest and Tumblr now. Yes, Absolutely. we Everyone. just just, just announced it today. Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Pinterest, everything. The whole <laughs> internet. Yep. Yes, all, We're there. Of all of it. Yep. <laughs> we own the internet. <laughs> you will go to our Pinterest. <laughs> 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 yes, because Arwen, pin our pin. <laughs> yes. Arwen is a designer Repin. extraordinaire. You have to check out. She made the light of Ellen Deal with like a heart shaped stopper, <laughs> and the um, oh, the yes. even star with a heart. I mean, she she's all up in the designing stuff. It's beautiful. It That's is fantastic. so <laughs> much fun when you want to play with like cheese ball. Like you know, images. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. It's like, oh, how can I make this cheesy? Oh, I know, hearts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it just totally is Glitter. awesome and fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had one of our our new reporters, Myla. Um, she did three of them as well, and we we just had fun. It was awesome. Good yes, times. you guys rock. So, yeah, good times. And her one of hers, it says. Um, I came up with the with the saying, and then she put it together into like a per, a poster, and it was something like, "Be my Valentine's, my love, my precious," or something. Mm-hmm. Something with like Gollum. That thing is the going crazy on Tumblr right now. Oh really? It is, yeah, it is going insane. It's like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Be our Valentine, my love, my precious. Oh, those are your uh, Lord of the Rings or Hobbit 200, Valentines. Two hundred and twenty-two. Did they say that? <laughs> what did they say on there? Now you I are know. a great Valentine. You are a great friend. Happy Valentine's Day. That's oh, come so on. generic. Yeah. <laughs> they you need great to courage. like. <laughs> great make courage. a great team. <laughs> <laughs> Be a hero on Valentine's Day. Oh, brother. Oh. See, ours there are so much better than you that. Than meets the eye. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's at least. I like that one. That should have been a Transformers <laughs> Valentine. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That is exactly what I was yeah. going to say, like, Transformers or... <laughs> I'm sure that sometime in 1989, 
Mm-hmm. It was. <laughs> but you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this <laughs> <crazy>. Nice. <laughs> for only five awesome. installments of twenty ninety nine. Nice. Nice. Oh gosh. Reading Rainbow, everyone. Reading <laughs> Rainbow. Oh, I love yeah. that show. I can do anything. <laughs> Just take a look. It's in a book. The Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Arwen old. doesn't need anyone to. That's I was fabulous. like, I'll, I'll do the echo. No, Arwen's on yeah. it. <laughs> Did you ever do like the contact? Three, two, two one. one. Contact. contact. Yes. See? It's the reason. It's yes. the movement. I remember that. Oh, those are good things. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh. That's fantastic. You know, and that actually 80s. brings us full circle to Star Trek because uh, there you go. <laughs> LeVar Burton. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Look at us go. This is the most cohesive episode ever. You're welcome. Ever. <laughs> oh, man. You guys, it's only five after ten. We are like. I know. Out we of need time. to quit. It's amazing how fast that hour goes every single time. Mm-hmm. I think, wow, we've got so much time, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Because ah, oh, I talk too much. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. Thanks for this having me. This is an Paul. awesome time. Yes. Yay, Paul. Good times. All right. Well, we will see you next week, guys. What do we have slated for next week? We should. We just mentioned Myla. We should mention them, our new reporters. Uh, Myla and help me out. Rachel. 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 We're going to be on for our Valentine's Day special. Um, but next week, I should look at the... Next week, it's the witch. It's the it's Snow the Queen. Snow Queen. Oh, the Snow Queen. Yes. Oops, one of those. Yes, we're still in the winter Snow mode. Queen. So Snow Queen is next week. So the everybody, Snow get out your Hans Christian Andersen and read up. I totally did. It's a long, did. wintery fairy tale. Yeah. Did you? I'm going to Hans I did. Christian <laughs> Andersen. Yep. Awesome. Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to show off. See, my nice... Old timey Hans Christian Andersen book. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, how old there. is that? How atmospheric oh. are you when you're reading? Oh, look, he's got one yeah. too. It's I've very. It has that old book, book smell. Mm-hmm. So old that it doesn't have the copyright written on the inside. So nice. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> this one is from like 18 something, and it had an old paper in an 1882 copyright. Ooh, fancy. Wow. Yeah, and it had an old piece of paper where someone was practicing their penmanship. Oh, oh, that's wow. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Penmanship. Kids don't even know what that is nowadays. Yeah. Penmanship. <laughs> Those whippersnappers. All right, yeah. well, okay, so for real. Memorial, <laughs> <laughs> say good night. Arwen, Lily. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Paul, for coming. No problem. Thanks, everyone, for tuning fun. in. One don't forget to check us out on... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always check us out on Zazzle. Zazzle. Our Zazzle store, our wor- website, warriorsofthewestfold.com, our Twitter, Westfold Warrior, Facebook, we're everywhere, as per usual. Yes. <laughs> and iTunes. Oh. And iTunes, yes, download and us YouTube. on And YouTube. Yep. If you missed any episodes, yep. Everywhere. Yep. Go on. Bye, guys. Go on, find us. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>